Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and uh, some of you may know that um, I'm now very interested in learning more about Spanish literature, uh, and what I mean is uh, the literature from Spain. For me, of course, that is going to mean um, the books that I can find that are in translation, and it's a big interest of mine, and it's something that um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, pursuing for a very long time, uh, taking it seriously and uh, finding all of the wonders of um, the literature of Spain. But it got me thinking about uh, the other interests that I've um, had through my uh, reading life outside of uh, English language books, books um, written and available in America or England, the other, the two other main um, countries that I've spent a lot of time with are the French and the Russians, in translation, of course. And I've read a lot of French books. Uh, I've spent a lot of time reading the Russians as well, and I was kind of thinking about how I got interested in all of these French books, French literature, uh, and I thought if I spent some time thinking about that, maybe talking about it uh, to anyone that might be interested, um, it could yield uh, some ideas for my approach um, into investigating Spanish literature. And my gateway point, my entryway into French literature was actually the picture of Dorian Gray. And in the book, Lord Henry gives uh, Dor Dorian Gray this uh, um, a dirty French novel. It has a yellow cover and it corrupts Dorian Gray. And my old friend Bob, uh, I was down visiting him in South Carolina years ago. He said, well, that's actually a real book. In, the, in Oscar Wilde's trial, he revealed um, the book that he, he had alluded to, and it was uh, Against Nature by J.K. Joris Carl Hausman, or Ausman, or Usman, however you say it. And Bob had a copy of it, and I read it, and it was the strangest, uh, most alien novel, hard to call it a novel, there's no hardly any plot, there's only, basically only one character, and it's a description of this uh, decadent, eccentric, wealthy, uh, it's a description of his house and his tastes, uh, how, how he decorates his walls, how he chooses the wall colors, and everything needs to be... Um, as artificial and as obscure as possible. And I loved it. But there's a few chapters, one chapter in particular, where the main character, Decentes, goes through his library. The novel is a catalog of sorts. And he goes through his library, and we have a chapter of literary criticism of um, uh, the literary landscape of of the time in France. There's also a terrific portion on uh, the ancients of Greece and Rome. And he goes through all of these books and they all sound so intriguing. And, and I used I used that portion of Against Nature um, as a springboard into, into looking into uh, all of these um, uh, amazing French books. And I pulled out a whole bunch of French books that I, I thought I would go through. Um, it might be of interest to um, someone who might be keen on looking into French literature and could possibly be finding the, the same kind of difficulties that I'm thinking about now looking into Spanish literature. And maybe I could 
uh, give some ideas or show some examples, be a little bit of help. So um, I'll start with Voltaire, which is a, a great place to start. And of course, that means uh, Candide, an extremely short, it's, a, it's an afternoon's worth of reading. And it's um, the satirical, um, hard biting, um, not novella, we have the naive Candide, and he goes off on these adventures. It's very similar um, in, in plot to Gulliver's Travels, it has a lot of the same kinds of sart, uh, satire, um, sardonic wit, and all of that. And if you find out that you like Voltaire, with a little bit of investigation, you can find a really good handful of other short stories that he's written, uh, other strange things that he's written, uh, and spend a lot of really great time with Voltaire. As far as the 20th century goes, where is the book? Where is the book? Um, <laughs> no, already um, out of sorts. Here we go. As far as the 20th century goes, um, you're pr pretty much, um, you, you have one name. It's, it's Marcel Proust. There, there, there's a handful of other names, but um, Remembrance of Things Past and Search of Lost Time is just a cathedral. And it's, I, I just pulled out the first volume, Swan's Way, and it's intimidating. Marcel Proust, just on the bookshelf, if you look at that big block of books, um, it's intimidating. And it's also exasperating. After you look at it and someone describes what the book is about, it's going to be someone just, uh, the, the recollections of their life after eating a little cookie book so long, you hear about all these long sentences. The great thing about Proust is if you read Swan's Way and you like the writing style, you're enjoying it, sit down, pass the time in an afternoon drinking tea and eating cookies and reading Proust, then Proust delivers. If you like it, you have a whole lot of enjoyment ahead of you. And then if you don't like it, you can read Swan's Way. There's a shorter novella-sized uh, novella section in this book called Swan of Love. You can even just read that and get a really representative sampling. And if you don't like it, then you know. Uh, as, as far as modern 20th century French literature goes, it's hard to avoid Marcel Proust. Uh, my favorite French writer, one of my favorite writers of all time, uh, of course, is the great Flaubert, um, Madame Bovary. If you're looking for a terrific novel, uh, just the, the, a, a pinnacle of um, the perfection of what you can find in French literature, it's Madame Bovary. Um, if you've spent some time with the Russians and you've read Anna Karenina and enjoy it, um, this is a, a good recommendation. If you like Anna Karenina, this is a great place to go. If you're also looking for something um, in French, in, uh, for French. <laughs> um, this is translated by Lydia Davis. Unlike the Russians, where at least right now, we, we have uh, just this rush of all-star translators. The, the, the Peaver Volonkonsky translate, uh, translation team that's just going through the Russians. I haven't really found that to be true um, in f uh, French uh, translation. There's a lot of really good translation. So um, Proust here is, th this, um, this edition is translated by uh, Lydia Davis and there's a whole translation team that went through Remembrance of Things Past. Um, for the bulk of the 20th century, the uh, name synonymous with translating Proust was uh, Moncrief. And with Moncrief, you, you, you really get this uh, 
spectacle of talent. Uh, it's going to sound just how you've imagined Proust to sound. All of those long, rolling, flowery sentences, and it's consistent. Uh, Moncrief translated the whole of the work. Uh, Lydia, D Lydia Davis uh, kick-started um, a amalgamation of several translators working um, in concert to uh, finish the whole. So there's a little bit of a difference there. <laughs> um, around the time of Madame Bovary, you also have The Flowers of Evil by uh, Baudelaire. They both, both had their uh, criminal charges. Um, Flaubert pretty much got off. Baudelaire pretty much didn't. Um, I've been picking and sampling at this new translation, uh, Flowers of Evil, which just came out. It's translated by Aaron Pooch, uh, Poochagian. Um, as far as French poetry goes, um, Baudelaire is really the only author that works on me. I, I personally prefer Paris Spleen, which is a smaller, uh, well, they're both small, but uh, another work of his that is actually poetry and prose, the little prose uh, segments. But it's uh, decadent and cynical and uh, harsh going on the, on the world, looking at how society is, and uh, it's beautiful and horrifying and all of those things. Uh, here's Paris Spleen. Some of the other uh, poets, uh, you have uh, Rimbaud, which if, if you like Baudelaire, Rimbaud's a, um, a really natural next step. Um, a little bit different, you have Guillaume Apollinaire, the uh, modernist cubist uh, French poet. Really fun when you're um, young and radical and uh, especially going right off, if you read Rimbaud and go into Apollinaire, everything uh, seems very exciting. Rimbaud and Apollinaire have um, um, had their shine wear off for me over time, but still very exciting. Uh, Verlaine has never done it for me. Um, Mademoiselle de Maupin by Theophile Gautier. Of course, my pronunciation on all of this is all wrong, I know. Um, and this copy is actually, um, it's translated by Helen Constantine. And of all the different French books that I've read, Helen Constantine is my favorite French uh, translator. She also did The Wild Ass's Skin. She translated that by uh, Balzac. With the French, you get uh, that deep, penetrating uh, psychological realism, which goes hand in hand with um, psychological insanity. And, and so there's so many of these French writers that um, in one turn will write these um, penetrating realistic novels, and then also uh, just with equal comfort write uh, supernatural, absurd, surrealistic novels, gothic, and haunting. Um, if you kind of go down this rabbit hole and you read Baudelaire and find, well, Baudelaire dedicated Flowers of Evil to Gautier, and then you read Gautier and think, well, that's amazing, and find out that Gautier thought, well, Gerard de Nerville, Gerard, Gerard de Nerville was uh, really the uh, genius of his generation, and so you pick up uh, Gerard de Nerville and find Marcel Proust said, um, what was it, <laughs> uh, Sylvie, Sylvie, the uh, short work by Gerard de Nerville is his masterpiece. And you'll read it and think, I think I've now started going too far off the deep end. But it's so fun going down these little rabbit holes and finding out who was talking to who and who was inspired by who. I love it. Uh, some of my just some of my favorites. So, if you read Flaubert and find out that you love Flaubert, then you get to read Guy de Maupassant. 
the short story writer, the endless amount of short stories that you get to read from Guy de Maupassant, and a handful of really great uh, novels. Bellamy is uh, pretty much where to start if you want to read a novel by Guy de Maupassant. It's um, sort of a coming-of-age story. It's somebody going up the ranks and um, succeeding immorally and it's uh, showing the underbelly of French society and the, the decadence and immorality and all of that and beautifully written. Um, so also the short stories. Uh, the Necklace. It's a great... If you just want to read one thing by Maupassant, The Necklace is a great place to start. Okay. Um, Flaubert... You really can't go wrong. If you read Madame Bovary and uh, love it, or like it, uh, you can read Sentimental Education. And this is um, my favorite copy and my favorite translation of Sentimental Education, translated by the terrific name um, Perdita Burlingame. And again, you can read uh, the, short, the three short stories by Flaubert and uh, his unfinished novel, Beauvoir and Picochet, um, his ancient, his historical novel was set in Carthage, Salambo, and uh, his uh, fantastical uh, uh, Temptation of St. Anthony. It's a whole wonder world uh, with, with all these authors. If you read Voltaire and read a bunch of things and find out that you like it, um, you can go to Dennis Diderot, who wrote Rameau's Nephew and Jacques the Fatalist and uh, The Nun, a handful of other short stories. Um, this is uh, Rameau's Nephew. Um, very similar. Uh, there's that satire. Uh, that D Diderot, Dennis Diderot, was also just um, experimental and an, an adventurous writer. Uh, also, philosophical and really investigated ideas. Um, I love Diderot. I go back to Diderot now much more than I do with Voltaire, and I love them both. Uh, let's see. Well, here's Against Nature. Might as well show that. Uh, and um, with Hausman, if, if you read this and think, well, this book is crazy. I've never read anything like it. Uh, Hausman, Hausman, Usman, delivers as well. Um, he, there's uh, the, the Damned and the Oblate and a, a handful of other um, dark, intriguing novels. And there's a progression. You can see him as a, a naturalist writer and um, um, becoming more and more modern and eccentric and original, unique. You can see that through through his books. Um, there's nothing quite like Against Nature, though. I was uh, mentioning the realists and the naturalists. Kind of have to mention Zola. I've never been a big fan of Zola. I'm I'm waiting for um, something to work its magic one day. I I, I find myself always when I'm in the mood. I I kind of go through these Zola novels, uh, or I used to anyway. Um, German All, uh, if you're looking for something to read by Zola, um, German All. If you're looking to start at the beginning with Zola, uh, you have The Fortune of the Ragoons, however you say that. Um, it's the book that started his whole cycle of novels, very much like Balzac with the human comedy, or Proust with his um, grand overarching theme. Zola had the same idea of just writing a cycle of novels that were all interconnected, generational, and um, um, world building, and all of those things. Uh, one of the best French writers. I don't hear. I don't often hear very much. About Stendhal, um, who's 
his two masterpieces, The Red and the Black, uh, which is very much like Bell and Me, that, that idea of somebody immorally ascending through society and then also holding a mirror up to that society, uh, all with um, gorgeous uh, language and um, uh, per perceptiveness. It's, it's, and it's fast. Uh, reading Stendhal is just exhilarating. Uh, these fast-paced, energetic, lively uh, books. And then uh, the, the grander scale historical novel would be uh, The Charter House of Parma. And um, I would recommend starting with The Red and the Black. And then if you like it, you have something better to read. The kind of the elephant in the room, the um, the giant, <laughs> is most likely uh, Victor Hugo, uh, and uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame uh, is pr probably his best work. It's him um, with the tightest control. He's really uh, tight grasp on what he's doing. It, it's, it's a novel that's just working perfectly in so many ways. Um, we have this um, story with, with the Hunchback and the Esmeralda, but also the landscape of, of, of Paris and the description of the cathedral. Uh, the whole story just is like perfectly pit, uh, fits together. It's amazing. Um, my favorite Hugo novel is *The Toilers of the Sea*. It's an, this. Um, it's philosophical. It's big. Hugo, I always feel like, is declarative. He seems like like the most confident writer. Uh, he, he's telling you things that are true, and the reason that we know that they're true is that he's telling us that they're true. He's a c commanding, declarative writer just incredibly confident if you read the hunchback of notre dame um and like it if you read the toilets of the sea and you like it then you have um the giant uh le miserable and i avoided this book for a while here's my gigantic copy um, i haven't read this um translation by julie rose um i read a different edition but Someday I'll get to this. Turns out there's nothing to be worried about um, with, with any of these big books, especially if they're classics. Um, with Le Miserable, for example, just it, 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 it's a big baggy mess. But if you like it, if you read Hunchback and you like it, and you read uh, The Laughing Man or Toilers of the Sea, it just turns out that there's a, a book that's longer, more stuff to like. Um, the other, um, a little bit older, uh, but th the other great man of letters uh, in France was, of course, Balzac. And I just picked out uh, Eugenie Grandet, uh, but if, if, if you read Eugenie Grandet and you like it, and you read uh, Cousin Bet or Old Man Gouraud or you can just start going down this path and there's so many Balzac novels. Uh, some are great, some are amazing, some are average, but he, he's so reliable. If, when, when, when you're in the mood, um, when you find yourself in the mood for French novels, I, I've, uh, I've been going to Balzac through the years more and more than any of these other writers. Um, it's often said that Balzac is the French uh, Dickens and Dickens is the um, uh, English Balzac. Um, I prefer Balzac. Um, I showed, what did I show? Um, as far as plays go, I, I just pulled out Racine, Racine um, which has never really done it for me. But 
uh, Buo Marques, uh, the Figaro trilogy, where you have the Barber of Seville, the Marriage of Fig Figaro, and the Guilty Mother. These are so fun to read. Uh, for the longest time, I, I thought they were uh, just the operas, but it turns out they're plays written by uh, Buo Marques, however you say that, and they're amazing. So fun. Uh, so that's a whole bunch of things that I would kind of recommend as good starting points. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I pulled out this whole... I have a whole other pile next to me of all of the eccentric um, kind of <laughs> stranger things. Not necessarily all the dirty novels, but uh, I have a whole other pile of uh, the interesting bits of French literature but I've, I've been talking for far too long. <laughs> Maybe I'll save, it, save that for another day. I know I missed a whole bunch of things. That's not really the point. Um, these are th some of my favorites, some things that interest me, some names that you just have to say. I know I didn't mention Dumas. I haven't read Dumas. Um, but um, if you're interested in French literature, a lot of this stuff is just a really good... Um, it, anything that you pick is a good starting point. Uh, to figure out if you like it or not. And sometimes the hardest thing is just figuring out who the names are. Where, where do you start looking? Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to be figuring all of this out with my Spanish literature. <laughs> then I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. So, um, a whole bunch of French literature, of French literature book chat. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you have any favorites. Um, so, anything like that, please leave a comment if you would like. Thank you for watching, and take care.